just to tell you my experience before I came here to, um, in Oxford. I met um, a paid consultant. A paid consultant because um, <coughs> uh, sometimes when I meditate, I had some numbness um, on my left foot, and uh, not on the right one. Um, I have seen three neurologists, and I have done MRI, CT scan, uh, and they have found nothing. So, um, one <coughs> devotee suggested that um, if, I in, I mean, if I was interested, I could see this pain consultant. And mind you, it was in the gym. <laughs> in the gym, so I was taken there to see this pain consultant. And he asked me to do some basic, some phys basic physical movement. Uh, I found some, some part of my body was stiff. Some basic movement. Not as uh, complicated as uh, yoga, <laughs> yoga, but, but I still found yoga okay, um, some part of my body um, was stiff. Uh, for example, he would ask me to to put my my arms okay as, uh, uh, to reach my my back okay as, uh, to reach my 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 head at back like that. Um, the first time, you know, I couldn't do that um, properly to his satisfaction. After, after a few times, I could do that. And after I have done, you know, two or three um, times the exercises that he described to me, the numbness uh, was almost gone. Uh, just to tell you how my relationship is very important. He said, after people are working as, um, in, in, in the gym, okay, they have a very fit body and sick mind. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a fit mind but a sick body. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I never thought I would be telling this to a Buddhist monk. <laughs> So this is just the way I came here to tell you. <coughs> in, <coughs> in America, such as in uh, Wisconsin University, where people use mindfulness uh, to do research in neurology and clinical psychology, um, people have found out that the mind influences the body and the body influences the mind. In neurological term, <coughs> your emotion influences your brain. Brain, the body, emotion, matter function. If you have negative emotion, <coughs> if you have negative emotion, then <coughs> Um, your right um, right brain the, the, the right um, cortex, frontal cortex we have more high level activities than the left one if you are anxious if you are um, in emergency mode then, then the left brain will have more activities so the emotion is reflected in the brain to physical um, phenomena. <clears throat> if your right brain has more activity than the left one, then the brain is sending messages to the nervous system throughout the body, and the whole body will become tense. Because the message that the body, okay, your own, the nervous system in your in your hands, around your face, around your shoulders, through the body, the nervous system, they receive like something like silence. This is emergency. 
this emergency. Everybody goes into an emergency mode. Every part of the body. I see the emotion of the mind dictating, influencing the, uh, the brain, the right brain and the right brain dictating the nervous system. This is for protection, this is for survival. <coughs> And if your brain works that way, that will be reflected back to the mind. If physically, if you are tense, psychologically, you can't be relaxed. You're going to be tensed. Whenever Sari Buddha, the chief disciple of the Buddha, compared the mind and the body like two strong, rely on each other to survive, to exist. <clears throat> In the Vipassana meditation, the first knowledge is called the knowledge of mind and body relationship. Nama, Rupa, Parijita, Jnana. That's in Pali. You don't need to remember the Pali word. It means we have to be um, aware of, we have to be mindful, you have, we have to understand uh, which is the function of the mind, which is the body, and how they are related. That behavior, we need to know that that's the first step of the gradual knowledge in the Vipassana practice. <coughs> and today, uh, neurological science and clinical psychology, um, they have Verify this. So earlier we have identified our emotion. That's purely psychological function. What we need to do now is to extend it to the physical experience. You visualize a scenario where you really have a disagreement with somebody very um, <coughs> high intensity, maybe in the boardroom, in the, um, in the company, at work, in the association, maybe at home. You remember that you recall that emotion, you recall, you visualize that situation, you revisit that scenario, try to con reconnect with that emotion and see how you feel physically, trying to scan your body. Whether the nerve, the, uh, the muscles okay, around your head, the forehead, whether they are tense. From time to time, I look at my, the, the pain in my foot. I look at this. But also when the pain alone is not enough. You have to look at other parts of the body whether the, the nerves, um, so whether the muscles are tense. If the muscles are tense, um, the body, physical system, is coping with this pain using the emergency mode, maximum energy level. With that, you're going to be exhausted sooner or later because our energy is limited. It's limited. <coughs> so from time to time we have to check this. Um, the easiest one is to check okay, around our genes, our mouth, um, and the areas around our eyes, like this. When we pay attention, we use this nerves more than in other places. Maybe also the areas around our ears. If you breathe mindfully and try to get connect, connected with the um, physical experience around those areas, <coughs> you will find out whether you are tense or not. And if the emotion is having impact 
on your physical body. With tense body, it's easy, oh no, it's, sorry, it's difficult, it's a lot more difficult to let go of your emotion. We talk about letting go of anger, letting go of bitterness, um, disappointment. But just to say, let go, the mind just doesn't want to follow. The subconscious mind behaves uh, in its own way. So we have to, we have got to understand it. So the easiest way to do this is um, to look at how the mind and the body are affecting each other. Mind-body relationship. When you are eating, by the time you, uh, you start getting fat of a certain dish on the, on the table, Now you become disinterested in one of the dishes. Automatically you, you start turning away from that and trying to um, okay, take another, di- another dish. You may not be aware of the psychological behavior at that time. You may not be aware of the emotion dictating your behavior of eating at that time. The emotion that is detecting. Restlessness. Um, Distraction. Uh, The um, ability or lack of ability to enjoy any particular dish properly. Can you survive with just one dish? With one dish? Okay, having your, your meal. If you can survive, try another meal. Morning, lunch, your supper, just one dish. If you can do that, you're going to save the world. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. Um, Professor Gordon Conway from Imperial College at London University, you know, a friend. He was a chief um, scientific advisor to the British government. Uh, he gave me a book about this. He is an expert on food and on you know, soil erosion, soil uh, preservation, all over the world. In order to produce one pound of meat, you need seven pounds of soil to feed the animal. But if you eat chicken this morning, the next meal, you know, you don't want to to have chicken. It's almost a crime to repeat a menu. <laughs> it's almost a crime, you know. You're thinking, so what I should have next, you know. All you are trying to do is not to repeat. At that time, physically, how do you feel? Just look at your your body. Somewhere in your body, you are tense. Physically, you may be restless, not just mentally. If you want to change, see, even if you are a vegetarian, you want to change vegetables you, because you want to repeat them, then you, you need more area of land, the, the culture. You know, the, the fertilized um, land um, to, to grow vegetables. You need more simply to satisfy uh, <clears throat> your wish because you know you are restless. This restless emotion is dictating you. 
to change and change. It takes us a long time. Okay, not to complain having one uniform. <laughs> I can understand why you want to change the color every day. I can understand. You don't feel good. Not only you don't feel good, you, you don't feel confident, okay? <laughs> Going to work the same, I mean, in the same color every day, you don't feel confident. And even though no one is saying anything to you, no, there's a lot of chattering inside, inside your mind. We take this for granted. There's a deep psychology, psychological problem in there. And the whole world is suffering from this. So when we are in a retreat, um, <clears throat> sometimes we ask people to wear just the same uniform. And they can look at their emotion. With that emotion, okay, if, um, because they have not changed their uh, their clothes and they have been wearing the same uniform, the same color for two or three days and people start uh, getting restless. And that, that would manifest it also in a, um, would manifest in, in, in the way they maintain that the mind would be restless <clears throat> so sometimes I inform the cook during the retreat it's okay to repeat the menu. <laughs> it's not to torture you <laughs> but to have you to see you know, the behavior that we take it for granted. Are we kind to ourselves? Are we kind to the world? Are we kind to the environment? Are we kind to other people? Well, this session is <coughs> to look at the mind and the body relationship. You take deep and slow breathing. If you, or you find your mind wandering often, you will also find that your body is tense. When you find your body is tense, part of your body is tense, you will also find that your mind mm, is not concentrated. And it's important to cultivate the edge of compassion. Not to fight with this tense body and not to fight with this tense mind. I really like uh, mm, the description by one of my friends, who is a monk and meditation teacher, he said, at some point, the yogi, they come to realize that their mind is fighting with their body and their body is fighting with their mind. If our mind and our body are fighting with each other here and now, forget about peace in the world. <laughs> we don't even have peace. So the first is to recognize that there is tension in the relationship between the mind and the body. And we go from there. So in this exercise what we are going to do is to just to scan, to take deep and slow breathing and then scan the, the body if you find any tension. That's the first Step. The second step is to revisit some of the more um, obvious and, and strong emotion. Maybe positive one, maybe negative one. Positive one that uh, uh, you are so happy you jump over the moon. Um, you, you try to relate to that emotion. Once you are related to that emotion, then scan 
your body, look at your body, how the body is. And also do the trying to trying to uh, reconnect with the negative emotions. If you see somebody you're not happy with, if you see somebody who used to criticize you, if you see somebody who you think um, <coughs> doesn't like you, or the, the person you don't like, for whatever reason, try to visualize that person, try to recognize that emotion. We have already done earlier, trying to register, get in touch with that emotion. And then extend it to the body. Just scan the body, if the body is tense. So first is yourself. And second is yourself in relation to other people. When we say other people, first your family, and the second, the people at work. If you have time, also the people in your social um, network, including those you know on Facebook. <laughs> okay, we can start now. We do about 10 minutes. <laughs> If there is any question, I would be happy to entertain that.
I think uh, as once again I feel you know, your question belongs to the, the next session when we are going to work on the physical and emotional pain. Um, forgiveness. Forgiveness and the emotion is uh, very limited in this scope. We are talking about forgiving a person. Uh, so forgiveness is defined as a relationship between somebody who feels insulted and another person who we think has been started. So it's a relationship between these two. Uh, the next session we're going to talk about pain, we maybe we're going to talk about compassion, karuna. And this one is, is more wide ranging as an emotion. It can encompass all other emotions. That is uh, by trying to relate to the pain within ourselves and within and, in, and it's the pain in everyone, including somebody we think has insulted us, has uh, abused our generosity, uh, has uh, spoken harshly, uh, who has done a lot of injustice to us, whatever reason. So I think uh, uh, this topic will be covered in the next session as well. About mind and body relationship, any other question? If there's no question, I'd like to uh, repeat the message again. When you're angry, it's important to check your physical state. And how your muscles are around your face, and around your shoulders, if possible, the whole body, you know, how you are. Just to bring awareness to that and relax. If you learn how to use mindfulness to relax your physical body, this will change, according to scientists, scientific neurologists, will change even your gene, the behavior of your gene. The gene will, mm -hmm, uh, will behave in a way that makes letting go easier. brain is uh, physical, but we know in the brain there um, are billions of neurons, and for each function, at least about 5,000 5, neurons you know, have to work together. And if some of them got damaged, then the undamaged one they will find other healthy neurons and start working with them. But this will only happen if emotionally you are healthy. If you are negative emotionally, those neurons, they wouldn't fire up. They wouldn't rewire according to using the term the neurologists use. They wouldn't try to reconnect with the healthy neurons. And if the brain remains in that state, that's going to affect the mind. And the mind is going to affect the body. You can see the loop going on and on like that. So the mind and the body, the relationship between them. When you get a call and you don't like what the other person is saying on the line. 
Just breathe. Okay. Deep and slow and look at I mean, your physical reaction. This is the first step in letting go. The first step. It's not just the mind to let go, but the body has to let go as well. We hold on to a lot of um, stress chemicals in our body. Stress chemicals from work, you take them home. From home, you take them work and you transport them on a daily basis. Stress chemicals. From the previous meeting to this meeting, from this meeting to the next meeting, you can transfer the uh, agitated um, gene, the agitated uh, stress chemical. You come to the meeting, okay, not relax physically and mentally. Okay. Your minds are already, your heart and mind are already. Um, Predetermine. In that situation, you are not going to be open to suggestion in the meeting. You are not going to feel comfortable if somebody says something that doesn't agree with your ideas. So, in the discourse of blessing, Mangala Sutta, the Buddha says, Dhamma Sakacha, in order to have good dialogue, the first one we have to have is tolerance, kandit. Tolerance. If I hear something that I don't like, and if my body tenses up straight away, that means you know, physically my body has no patience. Is or is already going into the emergency mode. Only a relaxed body is patient, and that patient body, that patient heart, patient mind, has more resilience to listen to different ideas, to try to process, to try to see from their point of view, to try to reason with them without anger. So in the uh, discourse of blessing, Mangala Sutta, many uh, the one is um, tolerant, the other is um, good speech, meaning good communication. And then you want to see people, you know, who have ideas, different ideas, and then dialogue. In all this, emotion management is very important. Very important. Um, tense mind and tense body um, tend to reject and shut up. Relax mind, relax body, open up and create more space, more space for ideas for, for differences to coexist. So, um, a question here is, um, um, please give an example how to talk to the others like this. The first thing that we need to, to look at is to look at our side preconceived notion. If we have already determined this person is like this, like that, meaning we are not open anymore. In that situation, we have already created <coughs> the basis for clash, to clash with, uh, with each other. Because, you know, we have um, fixed ideas. All we try to do is to persuade them to agree with us. One question here is, is uh, how do we improve our relationship after identifying our emotion? Um, 
the first is to try to make sure that emotionally we don't go into emergency mode. If we go into emergency mode, we use um, uh, energy at maximum level, as I mentioned last night. Our liver, our heart, our lung, they pump up more blood, using more energy, and we are going to run off of that energy sooner or later. An exhausted person as somebody who has no enough sleep, that person is easily agitated. If a child is sleepy, if a child is tired, this child is very grumpy. But if the child is um, um, well contented, that means uh, um, they have good sleep. They are not tired, they have full of energy. So they have more resilience to, to tolerate. So the message of this uh, second session is the importance of the uh, relationship between the mind and the body. I think we take uh, another break, for seven minutes break, and we come back for another session. This time is a more difficult session, I warn you.